Hello and welcome to another episode of Spirit in Stone. In our last video, we explored how the ancient Egyptians may have used geopolymer technology to cast their gigantic megalithic stone blocks. Also, we have explained why we find these megalithic nubs and scoop marks at ancient sites all over the world and we took a close look at one of Egypt's greatest mysteries, the unfinished obelisk of Aswan. And that's where many of you raised some important questions. Because in that video, we didn't just suggest that they were able to soften the granite, but we proposed something far more radical, that the primary purpose of this ancient quarry was not the obelisk, but the production of water glass. And since then, we have received a lot of thoughtful criticism and questions, especially about the unfinished obelisk and what was really happening here. So in today's video, I want to share a few more ideas and explain why the so-called unfinished obelisk might not be what it seems. And towards the end of this video, I will also share an important new observation from the Valley Temple that might change the course of this entire discussion. So, let's dive right in. So, as I mentioned before in our last video, we have suggested that this ancient quarry here around the unfinished obelisk of Aswan, the primary goal of this operation here was the production of water glass. And in case if somebody is asking now, what the heck is this guy talking about? What is water glass? So for those of you, you have to start with this video here. Yeah, there we explain in detail the basics about ancient geopolymer and how the ancient Egyptians might have produced water glass. I will summarize it here quickly again in layman's terms. So the basic idea is that these scoop marks and these square-shaped depressions that we see around the unfinished obelisk and on top of the unfinished obelisk and all around this ancient quarry, the reason for these scoop marks and depressions is because they have etched the granite with molten natron. Yeah? When you heat natron to 851 degrees Celsius or more, it will melt and this molten natron is able to etch granite. Yeah? It will eat up the granite. And the end result of this chemical reaction is another white powder and this is water glass, okay? And this water glass is the main ingredient to produce ancient artificial granite, also called geopolymer. And the reason why we see these depressions is because if you would just melt the natron on the flat granite, it will just spill uncontrolled over the whole surface. So you need to create some kind of pool or a depression so the molten natron will stay there once it is uh, hot and molten. And this molten natron will etch and eat into the granite. And that's where these depressions get larger and deeper and deeper. So if we really accept the idea for a moment now that the primary goal of this operation here was the production of water glass, then of course it would be only logical that this etching process would have been done in a controlled way. Yeah? They would not just create holes in an uncontrolled manner. It makes total sense to create a, a straight line or a trench that you can actually go down. And it makes sense for several reasons, in my opinion. Imagine you have this quarry and there are like many workers there and there is maybe one overseer who is a little bit in an elevated position. And maybe this guy decided, okay, we will do it in two parallel straight lines and we will form two parallel 
trenches, let's say, okay? And slowly, slowly, these trenches get longer and longer and longer. And maybe then they decided, you know what? Let's make it a obelisk shape. Let's make it pointy at the end. And he just told the workers, guys, let's make it pointy. I want to see an obelisk in this quarry. Yeah, maybe this was just a decorative thing to have an unfinished obelisk in the quarry. Yeah, who knows? And why not? Why would you not do this? You know, especially we know that the ancient Egyptians, they worshipped um, the obelisk as a symbol. No, it was an important symbol for them. So why wouldn't they do this? You know, I find this very logical. I mean, they have already worked there for such a long time and they have created this long trenches, you know. So why not make it an obelisk shape? And then we come to another point. Because under the obelisk, that's where it gets really interesting. Because here it gets more and more difficult if you think about carving it, yeah. Imagine the idea was really to carve out this single piece of granite, yeah, this entire obelisk. Let's just ignore the fact that we have no clue how they would have completely removed it from the quarry or move it anywhere. Let's ignore all of the transport and raising it up questions. So if we look under this obelisk, then you will reach a, an area where it gets almost impossible to carve this with these pounding stones or even with hammer and chisel. Yeah? How do you continue underneath? Yeah? How do you do that? You will reach a point where you cannot really continue. Yeah? How, do you, how do you finish this obelisk? This is uh, almost impossible to explain. And uh, it gets also increasingly difficult for the worker. And here one idea came to my mind. So if we look at this area here under the obelisk from the perspective of a worker whose job is to produce water glass, then this area under the obelisk is actually the most valuable and productive area for these workers. Because the main task here is to heat the granite together with the molten natron. And I would argue that under the obelisk, in this corner there, you will have the best conditions to heat the natron there. In our previous video, we have also explained how they have done it. Yeah, they would have worked with coal and with foot bellows. And this is even described in a mural painting in the tomb of Rekmere. And if I would have the task now to heat this stone with coal as hot as possible, I would probably start under the obelisk because there you have the best conditions. Yeah, you don't have much wind there and the heat cannot dissipate so easily into the air. It would be much better contained the heat there. So I believe the area under the obelisk is the most productive area. And the reason why we see this undercut under the obelisk is because that is the perfect place to, to produce water glass. And the shape of the obelisk is just a secondary decorative element. Maybe they were intentions to someday, if the etching of the granite has continued far enough, maybe they had plans to break out pieces or, or blocks of this um, unfinished obelisk. That might also be the reason why we see a saw mark there. Yeah, I believe that this was never meant to be a real obelisk. And think about it. We have never seen an obelisk that is even nearly of that scale. Yeah? Normally, obelisks in Egypt are much thinner. And this would have been like... Uh, a crazy project, something that we have never seen, not, not even close to that, yeah? But this etching process and the production of water glass explains this entire site, in my opinion, yeah? The place under the obelisk that we regard as unexplainable for carving and the most difficult part is the most productive and valuable part if you accept that they were producing water glass. Yeah. And when I think more about it, the shape of the obelisk makes total sense. 
the tip maybe doesn't make so much sense, okay? But everything else, this undercut and the scoop marks, it's very smart and it's probably very productive. Yeah. And we are just at the beginning of figuring this out, thanks to people like Marcel Foti and many other creative minds. Yeah, and that brings us now to our next topic here. So in our last video, we have also explained how the ancient Egyptians might have cast all these gigantic granite blocks that you see here in the Valley Temple. Yeah, this is at the Giza Plateau next to the Sphinx. Yeah, we have explained how they might have used wooden poles to create a mold or a formwork and then they have poured the liquid stone into this formwork. So if you haven't seen it, check out the video. Here's the playlist. And to understand what I'm about to explain now, you have to watch this video first. So here in this valley temple, as you might have seen already, there is one mysterious stone which is completely black, which looks completely different than all the other stones. And for a long time, I was breaking my head about this stone, like, why did they do this? What is the message here? No, like there must be a reason for that. Everything else is red granite. So why did they use this black stone? Uh, and all of this here is red granite from Aswan, they say. And when we were watching this video together, my wife pointed out that in some areas, Almost every single stone block has a different shade of red. Yeah, you can see here they have all slightly different colors. I really don't know why I never noticed this because my attention was always drawn to this uh, black stone. And also we see some of them are gray or blackish. And this is a very interesting observation and a strong indication that they have worked with geopolymer here, yeah? that they have cast all these stones. Because if you walk around the Aswan granite quarry, you will notice that the color of the red granite is absolutely homogeneous, super homogeneous. Yeah? When you look from far away, you see one color. Of course, when you look very close, you see here and there some enclosures, but the overall color is all the same tone. This, what we see here in the Valley Temple, I would argue that this does not exist in the Aswan Quarry, these different shades. And the answer to this is, they have added more slaked lime to the mixture to make the stone more light, or they might have added more wood ash to make the stone more dark or grayish or even black. In our last video, you can clearly see how Marcel Foti is able to change the color of the stone by doing exactly this. So in my opinion, it gets more and more clear that the ancient Egyptians were indeed able to cast their gigantic stones. And I'm not suggesting here that everything in ancient Egypt has been cast. There are definitely objects from granite that have been carved, but I think this theory makes a lot of sense. And we can also clearly see in the Aswan quarry that they have definitely also used other methods to remove the stones. No question about that. But I think it's pretty clear that they were able to etch the granite, they were able to produce water glass, and for sure they have used this technology also to make their other works easier, yeah? to remove big stone blocks from this quarry. For sure they have also used this technology or a mix of different technologies. So yeah, let's think about that. Let me know in the comments if this makes sense to you. But I think the part under the obelisk is really solved now. This is the most productive area of this quarry, if we accept that they have produced water glass here. Yeah, guys, I hope I was able to clarify some of your questions and I hope you are also able to look at these kind of sites from a different perspective now. As always, thank you so much for your time. If you like to support us, you can find the paper link in the description. Have a wonderful day and see you in the next video. Ciao!